Lately, I feel like I've been stuck in a loop. Monday to Sunday, get up, work out, eat, work, call mom, eat, see friends, eat, go to bed. When did I grow up? Do you ever just wanna like pause and rewind a little bit? I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Time travel? Yeah, it already exists. First step, get your parents or your grandparents to send you the recipe of your favorite childhood dish, go to the grocery store, and while you're there, really step into the shoes of your five-year-old self. See, I told you guys food is more than just fuel. It's a freaking time machine. Oh my God, childhood. So let's enjoy this trip down memory lane together and take a moment to remember the nostalgic foods of yesteryear, the beloved Dunkaroo, the classic Fruit Loop, the legendary Bagel Bites. Ooh. Oh my god, I found it. I'm like kind of lactose intolerant, but when I was younger, I drank milk like it was water. Wish me luck. I don't really know what kids eat nowadays. Broccoli, dino nuggets, organic fruit gummies, high fiber, gluten-free kale chips. Yeah, no, definitely not me. Our first stop on our little trip down memory lane is my go-to breakfast combo. I think I was just born with a peanut butter obsession. Raisin toast. I ate it in a very specific way every single morning, and it wasn't just me. It was me, my dad, and my mom, all of us, raisin toast. All the real raisin toast was sold out. So I had to get this gluten-free, very high fiber, low-fat, soy-free, vegetarian, wheat-free, dairy-free. So I'm assuming this is going to taste like grass. Does anyone do this? I made it my goal in life to fry it to the perfect over mediumness. Sweet cinnamon raisin. The salty peanut butter. I don't know what the egg is doing, but it's just so good. The bread kind of tastes like cardboard. And you always leave the center of the yolk to the very end. And then before I go to school, I would always have a breakfast dessert. People always think of a person when they're asked who their first love was. I don't even think I need to say mine. It's food, by the way. Truly, nothing made me happier as a kid than when dinner was ready or it was pizza day at school or when the teacher said, lunchtime. Goldfish were my thing. They're still my thing. I think I pack these as snacks until like second year university. My mom always told me apples were gonna save my life. My adult Lunchable. Because I'm double the age and I'm an adult that can make my own decisions, I put two Kit Kats in. Job. Oh, that's kind of fire. There's a study that came out about like the chemicals they use in this. I don't care. Deep down, I always hated Lunchables, but it was the only way I could get my Kit Kat fix. So I endured the yucky meat and processed cheese and it was never not worth it. Ooh, potato. We grew this from our own garden. Wow, could be like strawberry. What are we making, Ma? Oh, please. Food nostalgia is like a food experience or dish that we associate with a happy time. Like when I make dumplings with my mom, I feel like I'm four years old again playing with dumpling dough like it was Play-Doh. Breezies transport me back to activity day at school and drinking a specific bubble tea flavor unfortunately is like reliving my first date. Food nostalgia or food time travel, same mm -hmm. thing. Wow, did not sure. Mm. I don't know why the only yogurt growing up my parents bought was Activia, but I found a lactose-free one. I also haven't had non-Greek yogurt in so long. Tastes the same. Okay, I want you to imagine a kid that's being told they're going on a surprise trip to Disney World. That kid was me every day because food was my Disney World. And then one day, it felt more like the end of the world. I'm not sure when eating more became bad. Hey, Chocolates bye. made me feel guilty. Sweets became the devil. I'm not sure when our relationship became so complicated, but inevitably our love fell apart. Food went from my favorite thing in life to somehow taking over my life. This also messed up exercise and sports for me. Growing up, I loved skating and swimming and badminton and tag and recess until one day it was no longer about having fun and it all somehow became about my body. When I Googled how to lose weight, they said, run, run, run. So I did against my will. Till this day, I think the treadmill is evil in the definition of torture, but obviously that's the only thing I did when I went to the gym. I thought exercise was meant to be something we all hated. So when I felt fat, I ran. When I gained weight, I ran before and after a big meal out, I ran. I'd set a calorie goal and I'd run to it. Only after I stopped forcing myself to exercise because I hated my body did I stop hating exercise. And now I realize that exercise was always meant to be the opposite of punishment. I know, never say never, but I will never be a runner. Anyways, now it's time to wash off all that lovely sticky, sweaty smelliness, and it's also the perfect time to express my love for native deodorants. They are just the best deodorants I've ever used, and they make my armpits smell beautiful, and they dry super fast, so it never leaves me feeling sticky. I want to smell like this every day. Who doesn't want their armpits to smell like the sweetest peach on a summer day with the sun kind of setting and there's like a light misty pink in the sky. Also, Native protects odor for up to 72 hours. Guys, that's a lot of hours. Who doesn't want their armpits to smell like a brand new, freshly done batch of laundry?
This kind of smells sexy. Is that weird? Native deodorants are made with simple ingredients. They're aluminum free and paraben free and vegan and cruelty free. And they just launched their candy shop collection, which is as amazing and delicious smelling as it sounds with flavors like gummy bear and strawberry and vanilla taffy. Three deodorants would usually be $39, but if you use my link in code LINDASUN2, you'll get them for $26, which is over 33% off. And with my code, you can also get 20% off any body wash or lotion. Guys, the FedEx truck just recognized me. This little brown packet of childhood right here is how this oatmeal lover was born. Add half a cup of water, stir. Microwave on high for one to two minutes. Stir to find dinosaurs. Dinosaur. Oh no, this one's gonna die. A T-Rex. Found another one. That's so good. They just taste happy. I hope they keep making this and make my kids eat this every morning. And then I'm gonna steal their packets and eat them myself. You don't wanna know how many pogos I've ingested in this lifetime. I think I may have eaten pogos for one third of all the lunches in my entire life. I don't think I've drank real milk. I don't know how many years it's been, like 12? My stomach is gonna hate me. I also used to drink three liters of milk a week for seven years of my life. Not exaggerating. I'm gonna do it. This is my pogo process. Undress him. I'm not super excited to eat this Smart, to be honest. I'm mixed emotions right now. Half of my brain is like, ew, what are you eating? The other half is like, did we just travel back in time? This is the star of the show. If you just gave me a whole bowl of pogo skin wrapping, breading, if you gave me a whole bowl of these, I could eat it. Can't do this. Until this day, no matter if I'm studying after school, playing with friends, having a movie night, mother son never fails to show up with a plate of sliced fruits. My favorite time of the week used to be 4 p.m. sharp, Monday to Friday, right after school, because that time was Arthur time. I swear the show taught me more than school. It taught me how to be kind and ambitious and understanding and that everyone is different and it's our differences that make us beautiful, wonderful people. Anyways, yeah, greatest show of all time. Oh no! If you don't like Arthur, you need to message me on Instagram and we need to have a little chat. And if you've never watched it, you need to come over right now and we have to have an Arthur marathon. From maybe ages zero to five, I never felt guilty for eating food. I didn't want to look like anyone else but me. When I looked in the mirror, I just saw me, not parts that needed shrinking or fixing or covering up, but a little role model. It tastes the exact same. Whoa. You have to tell me what you think it tastes like. Like the nature valley, right? I just loved food. Literally, the snack pantry was my favorite room in the house. This combo of loving food and just naturally being in a bigger body at a younger age eventually made me believe my body was wrong. And therefore, also my love for food. Wow. Oh, yeah. So many layers. One, two, three, four, five. Many. <laughs> For today's workout, vlog lotties. I was obsessed in like a really unhealthy way. Not with her, but like her videos. Maybe her. Hi. But it has been 12 years and I'm in a much better place. I lie. And I think she is too. Ten years ago, I would have never thought I would be able to do her videos again, let alone be excited to. This teleports me back to a pretty terrible time in my life. Addicted is an understatement. Like working with a friend, like literally. I did these workouts every day, three times a day. I think I partly and wrongly blamed her for my exercise addiction and considered her as the catalyst to my toxic relationship with food. I'm crying. When I see her, it feels like I'm right back there again. Waking up at 5 a.m. to do her calorie burning videos and staying up till 12 a.m. doing her ab exercises, I can literally hear her saying no pain, no gain. But now that I'm older, I see how it wasn't her. It was me. Are they Beast. And just the time we were living in, when diet culture was so loud and beauty standards were so small. Don't feel bad if you can't make it all the way to the end. Everyone is on a separate fitness journey and you just have to understand there's no sense in comparing yourself to anyone else but yourself.
Okay, then it fits past four years. Oh yeah, you're a diva. I idolized her, and so when she told me I just needed to work harder, abs were made in the kitchen to eat less carbs, I believed her. But I do think it's kind of beautiful that I can rewrite the narrative now. Nostalgia. I'm proud that I can appreciate and feel inspired by Cassie as a creator and a businesswoman and just an incredible human being. When I was little, fruit roll-ups were the cool kid snack, so they were not a common snack in my lunch pail, but when I did eat them, yeah, it felt insanely cool. We're going to bake this for five hours following the recipe. This has been in the oven for 12 hours. We'll try her tomorrow. It better be worth it, like. Wait, it actually works. <laughs> These better taste freaking delicious. I'm gonna be angry. These best chip flavor. If you've never put chips in your sandwich before, my heart goes out to you because you've truly been missing out on the most elite sandwich experience of your life. I'm also very excited for you because your life is about to change. Never underestimate the power of potato chip. Mmm, that is so good. It brings me back. It's not terrible. It's actually not bad. Definitely not great. I feel like you might like it. <laughs> so what was your Oreo eating technique? I was always a dunk until extreme sogginess type of kid. I know some people like, and then. Which I think is less superior. If you ask five people what foods they consider their childhood comfort foods, you'll likely get five different answers. But if you ask five people that are Chinese, I bet at least two of them will either say dumplings or tomato and egg. Hi this week really does bring me back to the Exciting. good and the bad. I always saw myself as the fat kid, so I was convinced everyone saw me that way too. And it's funny how once you are the fat kid, you kind of stay the fat kid. Not physically, but mentally. I don't have many memories of my childhood where I wasn't fat. It was just the way I was. I don't even really remember ever knowing what it felt like to love my body. That label, the fat kid, changed the way I saw myself in mirrors, how I made friends, why I felt so insecure in my relationship. Honestly, I kind of like it more. It's not as sweet, but it's just sweet enough. So back in the day when I used to eat all these foods I'm eating in this video, I didn't know there was anything wrong with being my size. Not until people and the media started telling me. I was ashamed that I was bigger. I was frustrated when I felt hungry, felt guilty for eating more than the other kids. How are you so good? I hated that I couldn't control myself around my favorite foods. Why did I have to get stuck with this body, I thought. Why am I the only one always thinking about food? Breakfast number two. My low self-esteem. It wasn't because of my size. It was how I decided what being my size meant. I let the way my body made me feel become who I was as a person. My body made me feel ugly, so therefore I was. I felt like my body wasn't good enough, so therefore I wasn't. My body made me feel like I took up too much space, so I spent most of my life trying to take up less. Kind of turned out perfect. I forgot to put baking powder with crescent rice, but it's almost better. Thin and crisp and chewy. We gonna try it. He bought me a drink. It's an Irish drink. And he's like, stop talking to me. And then she just texts me. This is ultra sour. That's intense. I should get the super sour one. I've had more. Oh. <laughs> I give this like a six out of ten. There's no kangaroo. There's a kangaroo. That's a fake. What is this white imposter cookie? Linda, why didn't you bring like yum here? Oh. Oh. It's like plastic. You know what it tastes like? Those cookies. Those sugar, sugar cookies? I'm gonna vibe with it. I give it a 7.3 out of 10. 3 out of 10. 3. 3.2 out of 10. This is truthfully how I used to eat fish sticks up until age 12. I guess I just use fish sticks as a creative and artistic outlet. I I don't know. I really don't. Do we see the tree shape? No, not at all. Where did all my artistic skill go? I don't know why I did it. And I don't know why I mashed it. Loki, it's fire. If you don't look at it, it's kind of really good. 
I think as an adult, I do like my food whole. It's more boring, but less disturbing. And meatballs. The sky is pink. I didn't let myself try out for certain sports teams because of how unfit I looked. I thought no guy could like me because I was the fat girl. I want to see if it is as hard as I remember it to be. Okay. It was I made up for my body by treating everyone else better than I treated myself. So looking back, it wasn't really other people making me feel like I didn't belong or telling me I wasn't good enough. It was my own insecurities that did that. So while all this food tastes just like it did in childhood, childhood didn't always taste that good. Honestly, Caroline is much better. But going through all that gave me lessons and perspective and appreciation for my body I wouldn't have had otherwise. I am who I am because of it. And I met all of you because of it. Was I the only one addicted to these granola bars growing up? All of these different granola bars. I love the dip ones, the caramel, the peanut butter one. There's like a rainbow one. There's like a yogurt one that was like weirdly too good. I used to have these at the front office when I was in elementary school. And they had these bars for kids that like forgot their snacks at snack time. I would purposely forget my snacks at home so I could steal these from the office. Oh my God, it's so cute. What? Mmm, that's a flavor. That's it. Lunch. I was always a very sweet and salty girl. And one day my genius brain decided, I love cereal. I love goldfish. Why don't we mix them together? And then this was born. At first it was a little weird. And then I realized that it was kind of onto something. This is it. This is childhood. You gotta get a little fishy. Personally think Fruit Loops are better. It's just good. I don't know what it was about the bigger ones that I always liked so much more than the smaller ones. Yeah, that's the smell. <sighs> really salty. Not as good as I remembered. Actually, like, not good at all. Like, 2 out of 10. But I was obsessed with these. Disappointing. These will never not be good. I used to get shrimp chips in this size and eat them in, like, a week. We've never had a shrimp chip. They are so addicting. After school, in front of the TV, 1,000 shrimp chips. That was the life. Most of my childhood dinners looked like this. Mother son would just toss a bunch of random food into a pan, add some sauce, and we would never question it. I would just fill up a bowl with rice and eat. And honestly, nothing will ever fill me up with more comfort than those dinners. You feel so warm inside. Yes. If my summer childhood had a taste, it would taste like this. I'll put it in a bowl and mix it all together and I'll eat it. Food will always be my love language. When I was little, much like how I am now, I ate everything and anything I wanted to. And somewhere in between now and then, I got a little lost. But I had to in order to find real food freedom. When I was little, I was just happy. But I wasn't exactly healthy. Because mindlessly eating a whole bag of shrimp crackers for dinner is not exactly health. I haven't had party mix in like 15 years. We have the pretzel. The the Frito, the baby rectangle, a Cheeto. It's like a love-hate relationship between the Cheeto and I. The absolute best thing in the bag because you can do this. And childhood me was just obsessed. Give that like an eight. Pretzel? I think a 7.5. I think I like the Cheeto. A 9.5. Better than the ring. Like an 8.7. But it is literally just a Dorito and it's good. A 9.1. But eating them together is just the perfect balance. You don't want like too many of one thing, but these are still the funnest. Guys, we got this. Oh, 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 whoa. Obviously, I want to feel carefree around food, but I also want to take care of my body. And taking care of my body doesn't mean controlling my body. And loving food doesn't mean completely forgetting about nutrients and fiber and protein and all that stuff. We can love food and also be mindful of all the other ways we can show our bodies love. You're kidding me, right? This is insane. So pizza bitey. All some of them I've eaten. You want a chip, Matt? Was I the only one that did this? Voila! Don't really want to eat it. Ew, why did I eat this? It's not terrible. It's pretty good. <laughs> I did like the dino shaped nuggets. This one's kind of dino shaped. Here we go. It's kind of like, what does this look like? A gorilla? A 
that says not eating meat is very fashionable right now. <laughs> For me, taking care of my body now means no food rules and living with all my favorite foods. But some of my favorite foods now include broccoli and Brussels sprouts and every single fruit that exists. But that's also not going to stop me from eating an entire pan of brownies or three ice cream sandwiches when I want. I've returned to my elementary school. I used to come play at this wall every day. I don't know how to play tennis anymore. I didn't really know how to play tennis in the first place, but this brings back a lot of memories. Let's see how atrocious I am. The amount of tennis balls I've roofed here. This is much harder than anticipated. I did years of tennis lessons and never really did learn the right form or perfected my serve, and I haven't touched a racket in six years. But let me tell you something about this wall. I came here every single day because a boy I had a crush on played tennis and he played on this wall. I always wanted to run into him, but I also didn't want to run into him. I swear I was in love. He was mysterious and smart and didn't like to smile, but smiled at me. And then he broke my heart and crushed my soul because he ended up liking another girl, but it's okay because I still have this wall. And I believe maybe one day at this wall, we'd run into each other and then I'd probably run away, but it would be worth it. Anyways, none of that happened and I never really heard from him again, but yeah, new first crush, it really does crush you. I spent my whole childhood wishing I were older and now I'm spending my whole adulthood wishing I were younger. I tell my younger self, honestly, to slow down. Don't rush too much to achieve your goals. Don't forget to enjoy where you are now while you're trying to get to where you want to be. In a lot of ways, you are where you want it to be. You're gonna get there, so you might as well enjoy the process. They're not egos, but they'll do. Don't let growing up make you overlook all the things that once made you happiest. All those small things that were the big things. Who I would sit beside in class, an extra five minutes of recess, hot lunch Thursdays, or maybe it was Fridays, after school snacks and TV shows, playdates. I'm not sure when I got busy, when I started staying in, skipping meals, relationships became so complicated, good days became rare, I couldn't say anything without offending someone. Mm. I could eat like 20 of these. Cheesy crispy perfection. These were my absolute favorite after school snack ever. I don't know what it was. No, I know what it was. It was the crust. I used to eat it in a very particular way. Break it open, eat the inside first. Because I'm still a four year old and picking out the peas and carrots and then just eating the crust. But now the older I get, the more I realize you'll never regret making time for the small things. Spending time in the places, with the people, doing the things that make you feel whole and alive. Even if it doesn't lead to advancing your career goals or building muscle, even if it's not what everyone else is doing, mm. even if it means backing up a few steps. Oh, it's so good. I love that most of my childhood isn't in photos, but in mother son's cooking, random scents, a big wall, the crust of a pie, a random street I walk down every day to get home from school. Do you remember these? The intro song to my favorite TV show, the name of my 10 year old crush, a bowl of sweet and salty cereal. This week was bittersweet but definitely more sweet than bitter. So, from a very experienced foodie time traveler, I think you should take a little break and do some time traveling of your own. I'll meet you at the grocery store in 10. I'll see you soon.